many people claim kombucha is a wonder drink, cures everything, right? Other people say, oh, it'll make you sick. It'll... Me personally, I don't, I don't think it's harmful. I also don't think it's a panacea. You know what it does? It helps bring our body back in balance. And from there, our body can heal itself. So what are some of the claimed benefits? So boosts energy, improves di digestion, prevents acid reflux, improves sleep, relieves constipation, improves circulation. So you might want to keep it away from your husband. Don't let him drink the whole bottle. All right. So, so all these things, how, how is that possible that one drink could have so many benefits? And it just goes back to, you know, whenever we're restoring balance to our body, you know, our body's always striving towards homeostasis in this state of health. It always wants to be healthy. We just need to kind of provide it with the building blocks to do that. So what are some of the, some of the claim negatives? Allergic and toxic reactions. So allergic and toxic reactions. So this is primarily caused by two things. A weak kombucha culture that allows some pathogens to get into your, your culture and accumulate and uh, molds to form and release endotoxins into there. And then people drink them and they get sick. Another, another way that they get allergic and toxic reactions is from using an improper brewing vessel. So if you brew in plastic, if you brew in metal, certain types, of, cer certain types of metal, ceramics, they have lead in them, it'll leach those chemicals in there. It'll leach those heavy metals in. And yeah, you can, you can get liver damage. You can get lead poisoning from this. So die-off syndrome. Has anyone ever heard of this? So. Yeah, we're, we're yeast dies off. Yeah, yeah. So, so die-off syndrome is, uh, you know, it's common across all probiotics. So if you have a, a real bad infestation of some bad bacteria and you start taking probiotics, introducing the beneficial bacteria, they actually start fighting in your gut. And, you know, some of them die off. Whenever they die off, they release, you know, toxins and causes some inflammation in your gut. You actually, you can feel pretty crummy for a week or so. You know, does that mean... I mean, you shouldn't p do any probiotics or anything like that. Or, you know, think about it like if you're a recovering drug addict. Yeah. You're hooked on drugs, and whenever you start going off them, you're going to feel pretty bad going yeah. through withdrawals. You start a war, and you got to wait for the good guys to win. Yeah, yeah. So, believe me, the withdrawal is worth the end result. So, it contains alcohol. That's a plus, yeah. <laughs> Why is that an issue? Yeah. So, so some people brew kombucha and you know they'll seal it, and then it will actually produce alcohol. If if you brew it in a ventilated environment like I do, that alcohol all gets converted to acetic acid, or almost entirely. You will have trace amounts of alcohol. So if let's take apple cider for instance, if we took apple cider, we put some yeast and bacteria in it and we sealed it, we would get hard cider, right? Mm -hmm. If we took that same cider and we put some bacteria and yeast in it and we let it open to the air, it'd make apple cider vinegar. Mm 